My, uh, my name is Roy Simmons Jr. Uh, not to be confused with Roy Simmons Sr., who was an alum of Syracuse also and, uh, and worked at Syracuse University as a coach for 45 years. I followed in his footsteps after a degree in sculpture from a fine arts school. I, I became a coach of lacrosse for 40 years. And so I hung close to my alma mater. I did uh, have, a, I do have a studio, and, and I was a practicing part-time artist when I was a lacrosse coach full-time. I've chosen a, a sculptor who was here, world-renowned, one of the greatest sculptors of the 20th century by the name of Ivan Mestrovic. Uh, my reasoning was uh, that I was privileged enough to meet him and see him. Uh, he lived several blocks from my house where I grew up and near the edge of the university. Uh, I was a physical education major and I can say that this man, unbeknownst to him, probably changed my mind and my thought process and I dropped out of uh, physical education after three years and changed my major not only to fine arts but as a sculpture major. Uh, even though I was in the phys ed school, I would sneak down to the carriage house on Marshall Street and I was always welcome to uh, observe him working, along with the many of the fine artists that came here because of him. Um, so, uh, he, was, he was quite a dynamic person. And, and when I think back on it now, how naive I think most of us were, that we were living in the shadow of one of the greatest sculptors of the 20th century. And uh, I hearken back to uh, a, a comment that uh, Auguste Rodin the great French sculptor, supposedly the greatest sculptor of the 20th century, said, Master Vick's much better than I am. When he did come to uh, the States after war-torn Europe, um, uh, thanks to Dr. Tolley, the chancellor at the time, uh, he was invited to come here and be a uh, sculptor in residence at the art school. Uh, that alone was quite a coup, to think that we could take one of the great masters of the 20th century uh, bring him from Europe along with his work and make him the head of the sculpture school. And he was a classic uh, European beret, smock. You stood when he entered the room, the whole nine yards, which I found fascinating. You know, he was the master and, uh, and he believed it as long as well as the students did. And we wanted to give him a show. We didn't have an adequate area, space for it. So we held it in uh, our gymnasium, Archibald Gymnasium, which still exists to this day. And I can remember as a 14-year-old going over, because that's where my father's office was, and seeing these uh, heroic marbles and bronzes, and, and in particular the wood reliefs that he did. And he came here, and uh, I think he was maybe uh, underappreciated, but we were naive, naive community think that we could have a giant of the 20th century, and we'd be standing in a shadow, and... He was readily available to anybody who wanted to talk to him, see him, watch him work. He was um, a very wonderful human being. And to think that we had it right in our midst, on our campus and in our neighborhood. And then uh, it got away. We gave him an old carriage house that's uh, since been torn down. Uh, it was on Marshall Street. And it housed horses in the turn of the century. And, and uh, it had a high ceiling. I can remember as a kid going down there and watching him do a statue for the Mayo Clinic out in Rochester, Minnesota. And he had a commission to do a large bronze, and uh, it wasn't a tall enough ceiling for him to do it in its entirety. So he started at his feet, moved to his hips, and he hit the second floor, and that piece went off to a foundry. And then he started the statue again with the hips on the floor and went up to his head and the ceiling, and the two pieces met for the first time at the Mayo Clinic. But to watch uh, a master like that work would be like watching Rodin. You know, he had students that worshipped him, mixing his clay and building his amateurs and casting things for him and, and hanging out his every word. It, to think that it was here and we let it get away, but the few years he was here, it was a treasure for us. And well, one piece from the collection I've chosen is the mother and child. It's a carving. It's done in stone, a very hard stone. It's a beautiful piece uh, that he brought from Europe. It's done in diorite. And the pieces I've chosen uh, from the collection, uh, and I'm trying to do modeling, which uh, eventually uh, turns to bronze. 
and I'm trying to do carving in wood, which he was a master at, uh, and I'm trying to do stone carving. To see the stone and, and see the figure in it like, like Michelangelo did or like Rodin did is truly uh, mind-boggling to think that they have that ability to not do it electronically or, or do it with uh, mechanical tools, but with a chisel and hammer uh, to release the figures out of the stone. I think it's truly amazing. Syracuse should understand that they lived in the shadow of a genius. And uh, hindsight's great, but um, it's a shame that uh, he didn't have more years here. We got him later in life after the war, and he, he had a very difficult time. He's had a difficult time with his country being communist. He had a difficult time with uh, Tito. He had been imprisoned at one time, a political prisoner. Uh, he'd gone through a lot. And, uh, being a sculptor major myself, I, I want to include his thought process, which is on paper. Uh, many times, hundreds, thousands of times, he was offered commissions, and he would start the commission not with a sculpture but drawings of his concept of what belonged. I want to, for the students here and those that, that are trying to think like a sculptor, uh, or how does the sculptor think, I want to see the cartoon in some cases or finished drawings in other cases on the wall and then see it um, finished uh, both in bronze, wood, and stone. I want all three media because he didn't stick to just one thing. You know, he was a master at all phases of material. We were in the shadow of a, a 20th century genius. Uh, whether we knew it or not, few people did. Uh, Lawrence Schmeckerbeer, the head of the art school, certainly knew it. Uh, he did a beautiful book on Ivan Messerfick when Messerfick was here. There hasn't been a lot written on him. I think he's yet to be discovered.